Hi, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is awkward. I I hate talking in videos. I would prefer not to talk in no videos, but <clears throat> I was told I should talk more in the videos, so I figured we would do a casual putting makeup on video. That makes sense. A putting makeup on. You see why I don't talk in videos, right? Figured I would put makeup on in the video. I would do everything start to finish. And show you everything I'm using. We'll do a everyday look, except like everything will be natural, probably glowy skin, and then we'll do like a red lip or something. Since everything's gonna be natural, we'll have red lip. But I'm gonna take the time in this video to talk about IVF and infertility and things like that. So if that's something that you are interested in, you can watch the video. But uh I don't think that it's going to be like, you know, anything too emotional, but just if it triggers you, then you should probably click off of the video because I, if things like infertility, miscarriage, IVF, things like that trigger you, it, it didn't click off the video. But I'm trying not to make this into like one of those, you know, sad videos, just like a informative talk video. And then we'll just do makeup. All right. So I'm going to pull my hair back. And we'll get started. Let me take these glasses off. All right, so first thing I'm going to use is this Milk Makeup Hydro. I don't know what things are called. I just know what they look like. Like, I might see somebody talk about it and be like, oh, okay, yeah, let me look at it and then buy it. If I like it, that's great. Half the stuff up here, I don't know what it's called. I just know that this is the milk primer that I like to use. That's how I describe it. This is the milk primer that I use. This is the brown liquid lipstick that i use you know but i just want to let you know if i'm looking at something that's why i don't know what nothing's called and if your skin is super 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 oily like i have combination skin but i really like that primer because if i use something too matte then my skin is going to get oilier but if you're really 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 oily i probably wouldn't suggest you use this one unless you're prepping your skin properly like if your skincare is proper then you can kind of do what you want. If you want glowy skin and you're oily, if you've taken proper precaution with your skincare, you can wear your skin however you want. That's my uh, philosophy. But if your skin is uncontrollably oily, you haven't gotten the control down on it, then don't use that primer. All right. Let me do my brows. I said I was going to keep everything on camera so you guys get to see how I do my brows. Because I, I don't think I ever show exactly how I do my brows. And I don't even think the stuff I use is over here. So, in my brow lamination kit, you can use, uh, because you probably won't, won't be able to get this if you're not licensed. So, you can use uh, what I was using before. I used, before I found this, I used got to be gel, <laughs> hair gel, to push my brows up. You can use, um, if you have any... Like, uh, what is it called? The stuff that you put on your lashes before you put your lashes on. Eyelash um, glue. If you have any eyelash glue, you can use that. If As long as it dries clear. If you got the one that's black, then you can't use it. But if you got one that dries clear, then you can use it. But this is uh, brow lamination adhesive. So the adhesive that you use before you put the um, solution on your brows. This is what I use for makeup also. Because it just keeps your brows... In the direction that you want them so before I start talking about all the infertility stuff I'm going to show you like detailed how I do my brows so after I put the stuff on before it gets too dry I take a spoolie and I'm just pushing my hairs in the direction that I want them to be so when you want that fluffy brow look right I see a lot of people, which is fine if that's what you like. That's just not what I like. If you want to push all your brow hairs up, that's fine. I like my brows to be in a specific shape. So the front, I will push up, right? Like straight up. And then going towards the back. And you can see like when the glue dries, it'll start to flake up. But you can just knock the flakes off. But um, when it goes towards the back, I like to put it in the shape of the brow. So it'll go up, out, further out, further out, and down. So that makes sense. So anyway, so for my infertility start, 
I started um, noticing that uh, I might need to see a fertility clinic when, uh, so a lot of people, you know, everybody's different. I've never had an issue getting pregnant per se, but staying pregnant was my issue. So I've had multiple miscarriages and probably more that I don't know about, but uh, in all I've had 10. So after like maybe the fourth one, cause I was, we were young, me and my husband, we've been together for a very long time, but we were, well, I'm 30 now, so I guess we, we I'm still kind of young, depending on who you talk to. But um, we wanted to have a baby early. Like, we knew we wanted to have a baby, right? So when we would try to have a baby, it would never work. And sometimes it would take me a while to get pregnant. So I was like, I, you know, I'd be like, I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's you. By the way, this is my ugly brow, so... Until I put makeup on it, it's probably going to look a mess so, because it's my ugly brow. But um, anyway, I would be like, I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's you. I don't know what's going on, but we need to talk to a doctor and figure it out, right? Uh, So the first time we called the fertility clinic, we asked them, we told them, well, I, I, I called them without my husband. I just called them on my own. And I remember asking that, you know, this is what's going on. And we want to try to have a baby or we want to be prepared to have a baby. And we just want to know if there's any way we can figure out what's going on. And I'm not going to lie. We were, I'm going to say like 24, 25. And that lady on the phone was so rude to me. I'm not going to say the clinic. But anyway, so she basically was like, uh, oh, and this is right before me and him got married. We were engaged. And the lady was like, oh, if you're not married, then we're not going to help you. And I was like, so you can't even help me figure out what's going on? She was like, no, we're not going to help you. So, But back then, I did not know that I had to get a ref referral from my doctor, right? Which I don't know why my doctors didn't refer me after the couple miscarriages that I have had. I had had. So I, at, back then, I didn't know what to do because I wasn't as... I wasn't as smart as I am now. I wasn't as educated in it as I am now. So, um, yeah, that brow ugly. Let me try to get that right. So I was like, okay, well, I guess we not going to figure out anything from them unless we marry. So we'll just keep trying, which was dumb. That was dumb. I should have just, you know, talked to my doctor. But I have a thing with doctors, and I just feel like every time I talk to a doctor, even now, I feel like they just... I don't explain stuff right. So maybe that's why. Maybe they don't get what I'm saying. Or I kind of feel like I'm shushed away. Until recently. Then I'm not shushed away anymore. Now it's like, okay, every question you got. Oh, we have an answer. We want to help you figure it out. But but back then, it wasn't like this. So we had one other. We had, an, we had another miscarriage. And after that one... We noticed that every time they would do the assessment on the fetus, it would be the same thing. They'd be like, oh, yeah, it's genetic. That's normal. It's genetic. That's normal. So we're like, well, if everything is genetic, what the hell is wrong with me? Right? Or what's wrong with him? Or what's going on? Because this can't be normal. It's been a lot of miscarriages at this point to me. You know, people go through different things. So anyway... I'm going to carve out my brows with the same thing I always do. The NC45 Pro Longwear Matte Concealer. So anyway, my doctor finally said, well, why don't we get some genetic testing done, right? So me and my boyfriend, well, my fiance at the time, who's my husband now, we get the genetic testing done, find out that he's fine. He's normal. Everything's fine. I'm healthy, normal, No, nothing's wrong with me. I have what's called a balanced translocation. And I know what it is, but like I said, sometimes when I explain stuff, it does not come out right. So let me read to you exactly what it is so I don't confuse anybody because I confused myself at the time when I'm talking. So a balanced or chromosomal translocation 
is a condition in which part of a chromosome has broken off and reattached to another location. In other words, it means two, seconds, two sections of chromosomes have switched places. That's like the easiest way to put it. The way I explain it is much longer. But basically, the chromosomes switch places. Or one moved and I don't know. It was explained to me differently. So we figured that out. We were like, okay, so what do we do? They said, well, you got options. You could keep trying naturally, but it's kind of like a roulette. You got to get a, you know, your, your embryo, your baby has to be like, either like me, balanced. Because most of the time, when you have a balanced translocation, your baby is unbalanced. At least that's my case. I don't know how it is for other people. I'm still kind of learning about it, but, um, which means there's not the right amount of chromosomes. Nothing switched places, just something's missing. So the baby has to be like me or it has to be like him. So it would be like a roulette type thing. So you would have to have a, kind of get a chromosome or an egg or whatever that is like one of us but it's been unbalanced for the most part so me being young i'm like okay so how do we you know make sure it's not unbalanced and they were like well you have to go through ivf which is in vitro fertilization and i'm like okay how what's the process and blah 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 so basically in vitro is when they stimulate your eggs right so you take these shots in your belly right and they stimulate your follicles, not your eggs. They stimulate your follicles so you can produce a lot of them. And inside those follicles will be eggs. I hope I'm explaining this right because, you know, I get confused. I know what it is. I'm trying to explain it. I'm, it is what it is. So then they'll pull the follicles out. They'll pull the eggs from the follicles, right? So you'll have like this many eggs or however many. Then it has to mature. Then they fertilize it. Then for us, we have to send it off to get it tested. That's how you figure out if the if the um, embryo is balanced, unbalanced, or normal. Basically, that's like the basic way to put it. It's, it's you can talk for hours about it, but that's the basic way to put it. So I was like, okay, so we can keep trying and keep miscarrying, or we could, uh, or we could go through IVF. I don't know nothing about IVF. So they were like, well, you would have to go through your doctor. They would refer you out and then you would go to a clinic or wherever they refer you to. The biggest clinic is my, in my area is where I called before and they kind of was like, we're not going to help you. We're not going to help you figure it out. So um, when we uh, we did some research on our own, we figured out the prices and we were like, how the f excuse my language, but how the f are we ever going to afford something like this? This is ridiculous. So we were like, for a while, we was, we said, okay, we'll just keep trying regularly. I guess it's the best option. I'm putting that concealer all over my lid as my primer. Um, but not a thick layer, just a thin layer, because we're doing like an everyday makeup look. So anyway. After a while, we figure out that, um, well, after a while, we get married, right? So now we can be on the same insurance. So that's great. We did not get married for IVF. We got married because we wanted to get married. But if you're in this situation and you do that, like, it, this I, infertility is a bitch. It's, it's expensive. You got to rely on other people. You got to do your research so you can always advocate for yourself because the, sometimes these doctors, they help and they want to help, but sometimes they want some money. And that's just me being real. Like, you got to just be able to advocate for yourself. So if you feel like you got to do that, there's no judgment on my part. Like, you do what you got to do. So anyway, we get married. I'm on his insurance. His insurance covers IVF partially. So that's great. So we've been for the last two years prepping for IVF because insurance is a <laughs> like it is it's a process. It's definitely a process. It doesn't come overnight, at least not for us. 
So we've been prepping for this for probably like two, maybe three years, in fact. So that's basically what we're going through. So now, let me fill my brows in. I'm using this brow code, brow pencil, which I think you can get this brow pencil because the brow code is what I use for my tint and my lamination. I know you can't buy that if you're not licensed, but I'm pretty sure you can buy this pencil. I really like this pencil, but I bought the whole set. I don't know how much they are individually. You probably could find something similar to it for cheaper. But when you when I fill my brows in, I don't like to I like my brows to look like really natural and fluffy. So I always use this kind of motion on my brows. Let me do the other side and I'll be right back. I'm telling y'all this is my ugly brow. It's the ugly one. But it always looks good in the end. But this is the ugly one. So now for extra brow fluff, I go over it with this MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint in the shade Stud. Usually for MAC, like for a brow pencil, I use Spiked. But, you know, and I've had this one for a little bit now, so I don't know if they've updated the formula or not. I, I'm probably going to go up there and get another one soon. But the one that's in the shade Spiked is a little bit warm for my liking for my brows so i got stud which is the darkest shade and if you ever like because it is dark if you feel like you made it too dark you can go over it with the spoolie just to lighten it a bit and i kind of went a little low on it so i'm just going to clean up that mark and that's it Really natural brows. Okay. So when you if if you have to do IVF, let's say that this is um the route you have to take. I'm going in with my Danessa Myricks Duet. Duet. Highlighting face balm in the clear shade because I want a glow on my cheeks. So before I put anything on my face, I'll just put these this on my high points. But anyway. Before you go through IVF, you have to, of course, well, I don't, this is what I had to do. I don't know if it's different for everybody else, but um, I had to get referred by my doctor. I don't know if that's everybody else's, you know, way they had to do it, but I had to do it that way. And then you have to go through this series of tests, right? Because they got to make sure that everything is... I'm going over with this Illuminator Veil. I think I want to be really glowy. But not too much with the Illuminator Veil. Um, and that was the Nessa Myricks. Only on my cheeks. You have to go through the series of tests, right? Because they want to make sure everything is, you know, fine for you to start. So... That scared the out of me the first test is i think an ultrasound where they count your follicles um yeah put some on my forehead um to see what you, like your baseline follicle amount is right they didn't tell me much about why they do that but they just they, that's what they did for me and then i had to um i had to get this other test where they had to take this catheter and stick it through your cervix and Make sure your tubes aren't blocked. So they fill your tubes with this dye. And a lot of people say it doesn't hurt. That should hurt like a Sorry, I'm cussing a lot, but that's the only way I can explain it. So this is the new Morphe Filter Effect Foundation. But it, it did hurt a lot. But it was what I had to do. So after I got that done, then we were set to start our shots now when you go through your insurance everything is so difficult everything is so difficult so we had a roadblock with our insurance and so we had to stop for a while and in stopping for a while i had we had um accidentally gotten pregnant 
I'm putting all my business out there. But we had accidentally gotten pregnant, which we miscarried. So, you know, it is what it is. But because I had gotten pregnant, I had to get a mini surgery done when I was ready to start IVF back up because they had no they had, they had given me that HSG test. That's when they fill your tubes up to die. They had given me that test again and saw that uh, there was something in there that wasn't supposed to be in there. So it could have been lining, could have been pregnancy tissue from when I, when I miscarried. Could, we didn't know. But it had to come out. So then I had to get a hysteroscopy. And the way they explained it was weird. So you can look that up. But I get a, had to get a hysteroscopy, not a hysterectomy. I was confused at first, but had to get a hysteroscopy so I can get the stuff out. And now we are getting ready for our shots. We get out, we start our shots for sure now. If anything goes wrong again, I will flip out. But we are supposed to start our shots on the 23rd. I have to take... I think two shots a day and then she gives me another shot to, it's it's weird whatever your nurse says or your doctor says is what it is if you have to get go through IVF but um one thing I had um <clears throat> I learned from this whole process is to do your own research always do your research because when you have to go through genetic testing you know, like I said, I don't know about everybody else's situation. I can just tell you my situation. When I had to go through genetic testing, um, when I I had to, we have to we had to um go through a lab which was not with the clinic. So our insurance covers genetic testing, but the lab wouldn't take us, so we have to pay out of pocket for that, and it's expensive. Everything is expensive. I did research on the type of test that I needed. And me and my doctor had, we had previously previously talked about the tests that are needed and all this other stuff. And this is why I say you got to advocate for yourself because um, <clears throat> when it came down to it, the nurse was giving us an extra test, like another test that me and the doctor had said we, we didn't need. We didn't need the test. We just needed a specific test. And so I was like, well... When I talked to the doctor, we didn't need the test. And she was like, yeah, well, this test is going to help with your situation. And I was like, oh, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's the truth. So I did my research. I called the lab and they're like, uh, well, as far as we know, they have you down for all of these tests, which cost all of this money. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what the hell? I thought that we only needed the specific test to find out about the chromosomes and they were like well you would have to talk to your doctor so I, I you can't talk to your doctor you got to talk to a nurse so the nurse is trying to convince me to keep the test and I'm like something don't feel right about that because when we had talked about this this wasn't something that we had to do so I know I'm rambling but I want to make sure that if you're going through this you know how to properly protect yourself because it's not cheap and I know other people who would just, you know, just believe what the doctors tell them. And the doctor is smart. I'm not saying that the doctor is not smart. But I am saying that I learned that my clinic partners with that lab. So I, I don't, you know, I just have to protect myself. So when I had finally spoken to the actual doctor, he was like, well, I didn't even know what clinic you were going to, I mean, what lab you were going to, I didn't know anything. No, you do not need this, this test. And I'm like, now I'm, now I'm kind of weary about this because they, they know that, you know, we had, we had run-ins, we had run-ins with our insurance and money and we were very open with our team, letting them know what's going on. So when, when, when that happened, I was just like, why would y'all do that? Why would they put me up for this? Like, this is not something we had talked about when we had set all of this up. When we had our initial consultation, after consultation, and all this stuff, none of that came up. And now this is coming up. And now she's trying to force me. And she was trying to make it seem like you, it just was a lot. So you just got to make sure that you always know 
what's going on. Because as great as, it's, as it is to have the opportunity to go through IVF, it's stressful and it, it's expensive and you don't... And, you don't want anybody taking advantage of you. Especially in such a uh it's already a stressful environment because you don't know if it's gonna if you're gonna end up with what you came for. You don't know if nothing's guaranteed. So you're spending tens of thousands of dollars. I'm sorry, I didn't even tell you what that was. This is Max Studio Fix Powder in the shade C6. This is just a a light warm powder that I like to put under my eyes and on the high points of my face. But anyway, if you don't if you don't know what's going on and you get blindsided, because I've been blindsided during IVF by things that doesn't make sense to me, doesn't make sense to insurance companies, and you just have to be prepared for everything that could go wrong. And I'm I'm laughing, but it's, it's honestly the truth. You got to be prepared for everything that could go wrong. So this is Mac Studio Fix NC45. I'm just using that to lightly dust on my face. So I'm going to use this Black Radiance True Complexion Contour Palette. And we're going to use that to contour my face. This palette is real good, y'all, by the way. And it's drugstore. It's cheap. It's one of my favorite contour products, so... And I'm not really doing too heavy of a contour. I'm just kind of using it to bronze my face up. Give me some dimension. And if you feel like you got too much dark on your face, whatever you use to put your foundation on, just use that to buff that color. Work easy, especially when you do everyday makeup. Everyday makeup should not be, you know... A hassle it should come second nature and pop a little blush on my face this is love joy by mac when i say every day i don't know what the fuck i mean by that by the way every day could be <clears throat> as simple as taking a brown eyeshadow blending it on your eye and putting some mascara on but i want to look kind of nice so it'd be an easy look but kind of nice so that if you're going to like a brunch or something, you can just do this real quick. You don't even need half the stuff I use. The, like the glow stuff like this and this, you don't need those. But I like to use them because it actually makes my skin look really, really smooth and glowy throughout the day. So I'm going to use my Pat McGrath highlighter palette. And I'm going to use the deepest shade. I don't even want to show you all this palette. I use it so much. I use it so much, y'all, but I'm going to show you. That deep shade. You can tell I use that the most. These two shades actually look really good on me. But that's the one I use the most. Always be able to understand what's going on as far as your treatments if you're doing IVF. Uh, your, your insurance stuff. You... You got to be on top of everything, and that's what I'm learning. I'm learning it. I'm not always on top of everything. Sometimes things blindsight me, and I'm like, uh, I was not prepared for this. And it is stressful because it's, it is a lot of money. It is a lot of money, and it's, it's, a, it's maybe. It's like a lot of maybe money, and... With, with everything that people in the infertility people in infertility go through it's like damn you gotta kick out all this money for a maybe and even though my husband's job covers you know a, some of a lot of it but there's times where we gotta come out of pocket for things and it's just so it's it's a lot. It's a lot. And if you don't know or you don't have anybody advocating for yourself, you'll be in situations that we've been. I'm using this Fenty Diamond Balm just to give my face a little bit more glow, just to make it a little fun. Um, You'll be in situations that we've been in where we're like, we're prepped, we're ready, and then this goes wrong, and it's not on us. And this is, this is the honest to goodness truth. We've had roadblocks because of... Uh, because of the financial department at the fertility clinic. 
because of our insurance, because of this, because of that. All these things we blindsided by because we did not know. We did not do our research. We did not, you know, we were not aware of certain things. Things that you would never think to be aware of. Because usually it's, it's really nothing. Like, okay, I got to go pick up my prescription. That's nothing. But for us, in, for IVF, it's like... A big 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 thing or like miscommunication on the clinic's behalf because I'm learning that I'm learning that there's not everything everything is not my fault and when someone wrongs me I'm learning that I need to hold them responsible and your doctor when you if you have to go through this your doctor is not perfect right you got to be on top of your stuff because they've done some wrong in on my part, which caused us to kick out extra thousands of dollars, caused us to be pushed back cycles. So we've been prepping for two years. Prep doesn't take two years in our case. Prep takes a couple weeks. But we keep being pushed back because of things that are not our fault, out of our control. So always be aware of what's going on. Even if they tell you, oh, yeah, this is what's going on. Don't worry about it. Worry about it. No, what does that mean? Tell me. Or if they're not going to tell you, do your research. Call your insurance company. What does this mean? Because I need to know. Let's move on to eyeshadow. We can move this kit for right now. So I am going to use... So I'm using the Pat McGrath Mothership 5. This is my favorite palette. I use it the most out of every palette that I own. It was an investment, but... I feel like it was worth it. So I'm going to take this medium brown shade right here. And we're going to dust that all over our lid. I really like this. I really like this palette. Like, If you ever was thinking about getting a Pat McGrath palette, this is the palette you got to get. I have three of her palettes. And this is the one I use 90% of the time. So I'm just blending that all over my lid. Remember, this is every day, so you're not doing too much on your eyes. And my motto for eyeshadow is, you yeah, can see all my dirty station, sorry. Whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So I'm just going to put that same shade on the bottom. I'm gonna do like a brown smoky, so we'll do I'm going to do this. My palette is a mess, as you can tell. We'll do that brown shade right there. Closer to your um lash line. We're going to use the same brush. This is an everyday look. I'm going to take this brown eyeliner and line my waterline. Oh my god. Can I see that? So I'm going to take this. Maybelline Hyper Easy. Oh my God, look, I put it in wrong. Oh, I'm going to have to work with it. Got to get another one soon. Anyway, so I'm going to take that and just put a little bit of liner. So I think I want to put a little bit of shimmer on my inner corner. So I'm going to take... Pat McGrath palette. And we're going to use this shade right here. And it looks really, really white, but it's it's actually really, really pretty. So I'm gonna take that shade. I'm gonna pop that on my inner corner. Where will my shit at? So I'm gonna go back in with that Pat McGrath palette. Same eyeshadow brush I've been using in the same color. I'm going to put that under my brow bone. Just give some extra glow right there. Almost done. So I have these lashes. I saw them at the beauty supply store, right? And I thought, I was like, oh, these lashes are cute. So they're lash, they're like supposed to be like lash extension curls. So the C curl and the L curl, right? The C curl is like a below the D curl. So the D curl is like your curliest curl. 
Then you have the C curl, which is still curly, but not as curly as the D. And the L curl is, is a curl, but it's like the straight, like the more straight curl. So I'm not sure which one of these. I think I'm gonna use the L curl because the L curl has a curl, but it'll look longer. It's just there's not much going on on my eyes. This will make my eyes pop a little bit more. Either, either one will work, but I think I'm gonna use the L curl one. It says J curl is closest to human lash curl, extend eyelashes longer and fuller. C curl is creates it creates glamorous looks without eyelash curl. Look great for both natural and dramatic look. L curl is eye opening lash perm effect, achieve maximum lift. Yeah, the C curl is the curl at the end. L curl is. Long straight back that curls towards the middle. Maybe I am wrong. Lashes are on. I'm going to use my Fenty Uncensored. Is that the shade? I always call this the Stunner Limp Paint. Yeah, that's the shade. The shade is Uncensored. I never knew that. But we're going to use that shade on our lips. Something... A little different from the um, other one I used. My favorite red lip is the uh, colored rain one, but we're gonna try this one. Well, I've used it before, but we'll use this one instead. All right, so let's spray our face with the Morphe setting spray and all right. This is the finished look. It's real. Everything is real simple, real easy. I just wanted to do my makeup and post about what I'm learning. Because if you're going through the same thing I'm going through, then it's probably nice to hear that um, that if you're having difficulties, because I know a lot of people, when they talk about IVF, like especially when I hear it on the streets, I hear people say, oh, yeah, my friend went through IVF and um, she got a baby. She got twins now. And it's like, it's not it's not that easy for everybody. It's not, it doesn't just happen overnight. And I think it's important to know that, you know, it's not the same for everybody and it's not easy for everybody. And if it's not easy for you just getting to the shots like it has been for me, then it's probably just nice to hear it. That's the end of the video. To watch my other videos you can follow me on instagram and thank you for watching i hope that if you have any questions you can you feel comfortable enough to dm me you can comment on the video or anything like that